My name is Siyabo Mazwani. You can call me Siya, Mr. Zwani is up to you, say. I'll be your tutor for board modules, PYC 1501, as well as PYC 1502. I believe you have received your, term, your official timetables. They've started emailing you the formal timetables starting from yesterday. Please make sure that you consult your timetable and see when you're writing. Let's take this class as a revision. So I expect you to involve yourself, ask questions, um, in order to enhance your academic development. And make sure when you, when you open your timetable, some of you now have a new base, some are online base. Don't assume that all the, the exams are online based like before. Some are venue based, some are online based. So make sure when you check your timetable, you consider checking the venue because things have changed compared to last semester. The first chapter under PYC 1502 is stress management. We have stress management, state of consciousness, to name a few, the sleeping process. Now we start with stress management. Stress management. It's what affects us all. Stress is a popular concept that affects us all. If I may ask, what's your understanding of stress? Before you even open a textbook, if, before you even open your, your study guide, you need to ask yourself, what is stress? Remember, you have your tutorial letters, your tutorial letter 001, which has, has assignments. Make sure that you do the assignment for both semesters, semester one and semester two, just for exam prep purposes, because you never know. Do both assignment, assignment for first semester and assignment for second semester in, under tutorial letter 001. Then you have your study guide, which is the most important. You open your study guide, it leads you to the relevant chapters. The textbook is green, student A to Z, our green textbook. Stress. What is stress? The concepts of stress. What is your understanding of stress? What is your understanding of stress? Let's do it together. What is your understanding of stress? What comes into your mind when you see the concept? Stress. Anyone? You don't have to define it. You give me just a word. What is stress? Oh, oh a term or synonym for your understanding of stress? My concept of stress would be feeling under pressure, feeling overwhelmed, anxiety, unsure. Um, your mind is racing, you know, but that's those are the few words I can think of when I think of stress. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. you have explained it correctly. Another one, yes, stress is anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, uh, feeling under pressure. All of those are, are, are aspects that you can include under stress. Let's check the slides. What do you mean by stress? Stress is, like she said, stress is, is, is the feeling you experience when things are getting too much. That is being overwhelmed. Stress is a feeling we experience when things are getting too much. So when you define stress, make sure that you also include the feeling, the emotional aspect of it. In other words, stress is an emotional response to circumstances and events that threaten us and challenge our coping abilities. You see, in other words, stress is an emotional response. So it's not just a feeling. It's a feeling we experience when things are getting too much. All stress is an emotional response to circumstances, events that threaten and challenge our coping abilities. So anything that challenges you or threatens your coping ability is stress. For instance, now, now you, are, you are preparing for exams, meaning you have received, you have, you have currently received your timetable, you are done with your assignments, Chances some of you have even received your marks. You want to know the feedback. 
in order to start preparing for exams. That whole process has to do with anxiety, stress. It's a, you, you are responding. It's a, stress is an emotional response to circumstances. Circumstances in this instance, exams, events. Like I've said, some some exams will be venue based. Some you will be writing online. That threatens us and challenge our coping ability. So any form of a stimulus, a stimuli, an aspect that threatens or challenge your coping ability is stress. Then it is a physiological response. It is a physiological response to physical and psychological demands, also known as stressors. It is a physiological response to physical and psychological demands also known as stressors. Anything so that, that stresses you from today, you can just call it a stressor. Exams are stressors. If you are challenge, uh, your relationship are stressing you, the partner that is stressing you, you can refer that person as, as a stressor. Uh, perhaps your boss is stressing you, he or she is a stressor. Stressors, it is, it is a physiological response to physical and psychological demands, also known as stressors. Anything that stresses you, now we categorize it as stressors among our psychology students. It's our, uh, our term that we're going to use <laughs> moving on. We refer them to them as stressors. So let me repeat, stress is a feeling we experience when things are getting too much. In other words, stress is an emotional response to circumstances and events that threatens and challenges our coping abilities. It is a, phys a physiological response to physical and psychological demands, also known as stressor. Moving on. In your textbook, you see that stress is divided into three sections or three units. It's one chapter, however, broken down into three. We have the effects of stress, the process of stress, in, uh, uh, as well as the psychophysiological stress the effects of stress, the process of stress, and psychophysiological stress. The effects of stress. Let's break the term down. When, the, when we say the effects of stress, the processes, the effect we could just say the causes of stress. What causes stress? Then those who can say effects, we, we look for synonyms for this. The effect is the causes of stress, the impact of stress, the processes, what actually takes place when a person is stressed. What actually takes place when a person is stressed, the symptoms, the internal, then the psychophysiologically is divided into two. Psycho, which stands for the mind. Psycho, mind, physiological, the physical aspect. You write down before you even hope, uh, go further studying. You need to break down the, the, the main topics. It will be much easier for you. So the effect for now, say the causes, the process, what actually take, take, takes place, the steps in order to understand stress, the psycho and physiological is the relationship between the, the mind and the body. How does the, uh, the stress affect your well being? The effects, the effects or causes of stress. Now we can open our textbook. Let's open our textbook. Stress, which is page. In my textbook, it says page 330. So the stress, the effects of stress. I'm opening, opening stress in my textbook. In my prescribed book. That's how university call it, higher education, prescribed book. So in my prescribed book, the effect of stress. They say, effect of stress, they're determining the relationship between stress and performance, as well as the relationship between stress and health. That's a phase. We go through the relationship between stress and performance, as well as the relationship between stress and health. The first book says, number one, some degrees of stress are normal. There are normal stress and abnormal stress. Abnormal stress when it leads to depression. 
of which is a simple scenario, I was telling you, it is. You normally hear that they, they died from depression, meaning it's not a normal stress, it's an overwhelming stress, too much stress. Some degrees of stress are normal, but too much of stress can be discriminatory in one's performance. In prolonged stress can indicate, has been indicated as a significant factor in illnesses. The prolonged stress has been indicated as significant factors in illnesses. So too much stress may also lead to illnesses. If not lead to illnesses, may um, cause more illnesses, may make situations worse. In the textbook, they say, well, figure one, please open the textbooks. They say, the relationship between stress and performance. They're explaining the relationship between stress and performance, which is this. The basic relationship between psycho and physiological arousal. That's how this starts. The relationship between psycho and physiological arousal, meaning the relationship between the health aspects as well as the relationship between the psychology part of it as well as the body, how does stress, how does stress affect one's performance? How does stress affect your physiological aspects? The best relationship between psycho, physiological arousal, and performance was established by two theorists. Two theorists. For us to understand this relationship, the relationship between stress and performance, we need to consider two theorists. There are two theorists in your textbook by the name of we have Jenkins Donson's law. That's number one. Jenkins Donson's law. I believe we have the immune textbook, Jenkins Donson's law. They say the best relationship of psychophysiological arousal performance was established by two theories, Jenkins and Donson's. Jenkins and Donson in 1908, and the relationship between known as Jenkins' law. So it's Jenkins' law, Jenkins' Donson's law. This law states that performance increases as arousal increases. Performance increases as arousal increases, but this is only true when stress indicates a moderate level of arousal, where performance reaches an optimal level. When arousal is increased beyond this level, performance does not increase. This is Jenkins' Donson's law. They just put the relationship between stress and performance. Yeah. They say performance increases as stress increases. This law states that performance increases as arousal increases, but this is only true when stress increases to the moderate level of arousal when performance reaches an optimal level. So in short, to, to summarize, according to Yates, Jenkins Thompson's law. Stress is divided into three phases. At first, there's a moderate level of stress. They say where stress is, is that true stress exists, is acceptable. It's an acceptable stress, a normal stress. A normal stress will be you go to UNISA or you register online for a qualification, you start doing your assignments. You can manage in that particular moment because the exam are far away. You submit your assignments in time. You make sure that you attend to the classes, you study. It's a normal stress. It's the stress that exists. Then they say the stress may increase beyond a normal level. Stress may increase beyond a normal level, whereby let's assume that you are writing on the, 20, on the 21st. Some of you will start studying on the 28th. Suddenly you are overwhelmed. And that is high. You are writing five modules within a period of two weeks. Three this week, two next week. It's a challenge. If you fail to cope, it's of too overwhelming. You say it's an abnormal stress. It's a stress in that in that case, you need to, to have to have coping mechanism. You need to consult, perhaps consult a tutor from a study group, take a leave from work. In order for you to start, it's a normal. If it's increased beyond this level, stress, a normal stress should be in this phase at moderate level, true, existing, and acceptable. If it moves beyond, then it's an abnormal stress. Once you can manage at this level, 
which is abnormal phase, now you are at high level of arousal. Your performance starts dropping. Your performance starts dropping. That's when you hear students, oh, I need doctor's notes. I need doctor's notes. I won't be able to write the exam. Some just say, I need a leave. I can't cope with work. Meaning your performance has dropped. So this is a summary. Let me read this in the test book in order to make sense of this. The test book says, when arousal increases beyond this level, performance does not increase further. It starts to decrease. Meaning, when you reach this level in abnormal stress, not acceptable, some, something that you, 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 cannot, you cannot manage stress, performance decrease. What do you mean by performance decrease? When you are stressed, it will be difficult for you to be uh, to run certain routines, to perform at work. When you are stressed, it's difficult to perform at work. When you are stressed, it's even difficult to perform with your studies. So they say, when the arousal increases beyond the level, your level of coping decreases. The arousal is refers to when you have anxiety, when you're experiencing anxiety, Obvious emotions are high. You are feeling overwhelmed. The arousal, the arousal increases. You can simply say arousal is to do with uh, chemicals in your body, the hormones. When you are stressed, it increases. And some people, when they are stressed, their heart will pump much quicker. Blood flow lowers down because you are stressed. And they say when arousal increases, Beyond this level, when arousal increases, when you are too stressed, beyond this level, performance does not increase. You are, lower, you are lowering down your performance. Your coping capabilities cannot handle, cannot manage. Performance is low when arousal level is low. The performance is understimulated, therefore, find it difficult to concentrate. The performance is understimulated, and then you find it hard to concentrate. As arousal level increases, the person becomes more alert. And reaction to speed concentration improves until it reaches a moderate level of arousal. If arousal level are increased beyond this level, the person becomes overstimulated physically as well as psychologically. So they are expecting, they are explaining this too. Meaning, stress is normal. You cannot live without stress. Stress is normal, we live with stress, whether it's positive stress or negative stress. However, it shouldn't reach the abnormal phase. Once it's reached an abnormal phase, then performance decreases. The person becomes overstimulated physically as well as psychologically. He or she becomes overly tense and loses concentration. At high level of arousal, performance starts to drop at the same low level associated with low level of arousal. So here, too much stress, you are too overwhelmed, arousal, your level of arousal is too high, your performance decreases. Work performance, study performance, even social, relationship, family, you, you find it hard to accept certain things because you are stressed. Your performance drops, everything in your life drops when you are too stressed. Then they say to us, there are factors that influence Factors that play a role in this relationship. What influence this? These levels are factors that play a role in this relationship. Complexity, novelty, and simple task. These are the tasks. When you say complexity, in, they say individuals are, are, are motivated to do complex tasks compared to simple tasks. As performance is optimal at moderate level, you would expect that complex and novel will still be performed most efficiently at moderate level. Let's start with complex. What motivates you normally? A complex task. As individuals, we don't like routine. We don't like to do one thing over and over again because it becomes boring. Once it becomes boring, we lose concentration. Our level of performance drops because it annoys us. 
even in the relationship, if your partner complains about one thing over and over again, or you 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 reprimand your partner about one thing over on over again, later stage it, it, it it's not a challenge, it's annoying, it's boring. Then you end up not doing it. However, if something is complex, you are challenged each and every day to to do something new, to find something new. Complexity, then it's much it's much easier to complete tasks without lowering down performance because you're always looking for something new. Is it clear? That is complexity. Complexity makes individual to to encourage themselves to do something more, then it will increase performance. The third book says complex and novel tasks, therefore, are most efficient performed close to, but just below the moderate level. Because they are complex. In short, they say complex tasks normally, they circulate around moderate level complex task because they are challenging. Then there's novelty, novelty, something new, something something unusual. It makes you to look forward to doing it. Something something that is new, something that is unusual excites you. New relationship exciting. New jobs exciting. Even simple thing like buying a new finisher is exciting, it stimulates your mind and become less stressed. Yeah, some just when they are stressed, they go for shopping to do something new. Something new stimulates your mind positively. Complex tasks they stimulate your mind positively. Whereas simple tasks, simple tasks on the other hand, do not have curiosity, curiosity value. People get bored with simple tasks as well as with those that are well learned. People get bored with simple tasks and something that you have learned over and over. Yes, they relate to moderate to high level of arousal. So these are the factors. What stresses you is determined by complexity, novelty, or how simple it is. That is number one. Under Yankens, Donson's Law. At moderate level, stress is normal. If stress increases beyond this level, it's abnormal. You can't cope. If you fail to find coping mechanism here, then we are at a high level of arousal and the performance starts to drop. What determines these factors, these levels, is whether the task is complex, it's is challenging, it's difficult, is not that it is new or whether it's simple. Moving on, we have relationship between stress and health. Relationship between stress and health. This does not mean that stress is a direct cause of death, but it certainly acts as a catalyst for it. They say this does not mean that stress is a direct cause of death, but it certainly acts as a catalyst. What they are trying to emphasize here is that no one died from stress. There's no post-mortem that a person died from stress. Instead, they'll say, due to stress, the person perhaps died of heart attack. Due to stress, the person experienced what we call it, this word, it's either heart attack, blood group, Blood clot, stroke, yes, I'm looking for stroke. A person died, died of stroke due to too much stress. Too much stress has led to a person to die. Cause too much stress has influenced the illnesses. This does not mean that stress is a direct cause of death, but it certainly acts as a catalyst. If you have high blood pressure and you are too stressed, your high blood pressure goes up. Once your high blood pressure goes up prolongedly, chances are you'll, fa- you'll suffer from heart attack. You'll experience stroke. 
That's what they're saying here. Stress is a stress is acts as a catalyst. The chronic illnesses, the relationship between stress and health. Chronic illnesses, the repeated stress, that will be cardiovascular disease, the heart disease, which you will find in your test book. Hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Stroke as well. That's, these are chronic, chronic illnesses which are caused by repeated stress. Then you, so we have psychosomatic disease, response specificity. Let's start with chronic stress. Let's open our test books again. Two, the relationship between stress and health. They say number one. Numerous research studies have established a relationship between stress and illness. This does not mean that stress is a direct cause of death, but it certainly acts as a catalyst for it. In other words, disease starts to develop in the presence of stress. In other words, diseases start to develop in the presence of stress. Due to prolonged stress, then your body reacts to stress. Then there will be changes, negative changes inside your body. The culprit seems to, to be prolonged periods of stress and so-called chronic stress. Then it leads to what we call chronic stress, the repeated stress, because we are not treating it. If you are not treating it, perhaps it's a situation that you are experiencing situations that you cannot avoid. Perhaps unemployment. You are stressed by unemployment. You are stressed by a, either your siblings or your kids or your parents intensely. Then it turns to a prolonged chronic stress because it's untreated. You, you, are, you are not managing it. This rather intense stress experience over a short period of time. People who experience stress over the two years period before being exposed to common cold viruses were three times more likely to catch cold than those who reported no stress. So this is the study. They say people who experience stress over a two year period before being exposed to a common cold virus were three times more likely to catch cold than those of reporters with no stress. What they are trying to say here, when you have stress, you are likely to catch illnesses, diseases, because your body is fragile, your body is at risk. You are more sensitive compared to a person who is no stress. Then we we'll explain later what do I mean. They say, the researcher attributed the greater vulnerability to disease, to, to disease stress trigger changes in the immune system, again, you can trace you can trace stress through your immune system as well, your metabolism. We can even trace stress. So stress is not just in the head. However, it's from start from the mind and to your body. Stress can make one sick because the hormones and the nerve pathway that is activated by stress change the way immune system records, making it less able to fight in vendors. Stress has been linked to cardio vascular disease and to the development of cancer. They say stress has, has been linked to cardiovascular disease and to, to the development of cancer. This stress, chronic stress. I'm reading from the test book. It's not something that I've, I've, I've created. They say chronic, chronic and repeated stress of a period of time can be harmful to physical health and may lead to the development of psychosomatic disease. Chronic stress can be harm harmful to individual can lead and also can lead to psychosomatic disease. Stress, chronic stress, prolonged stress can lead to psychosomatic disease. A psychosomatic disease, what is psychosomatic disease? They say it's a body and mind. It's the relationship between between a body and mind. It is the condition when, when psychological factors contribute to physical damage in your body or to harmful changes in body function. Psychosomatic diseases are not imaginary, they are real conditions. But psychological factors, particularly the, ex the experience of stress, plays a significant role in the cause of such illness. Stress causes a huge role in, in that particular illnesses. Okay, let's keep. 
The last paragraph, then I explain it clear. I will explain it to you. I give you examples. However, stress is not only cause of psychosomatic stresses. They say stress is not only cause of psychosomatic illnesses. The person who develops psychosomatic condition often has a potential potential physical weakness in particular organ of the body. Then the presence of stress that organ functions breakdown. Then I can explain now. How does stress affect the body? In more practical terms, in order to remember when you you writing your exams, how does stress affect your health? In practical terms, because I can I can explain chronic and repeated stress psychosomatic disease. However, if you don't if I don't give you a practical sense of it, you won't understand. Then how does stress? Um, remember, stress is an intense emotional response to a particular situation. It's a response to a particular situation. Then they say prolonged stress. Prolonged stress is a stress that can lead a year or two years without being treated. Being treated, I mean without finding solution to what's stressing you, without consulting a psychologist or therapist, or even though you consult them, however, your situation is overwhelming. I mentioned unemployment. Unemployment has that. It creates prolonged stress because you're looking for financial, looking for financial freedom, financial resolution, but you can't find them. Then you are stressed over and over for years. They are stressed. They are not that stress does to your body. Remember, our body. In order for our body to function effectively, we need oxygen and blood circulation. Our body, in order to function effectively, we need an circulation of oxygen and blood, blood circulation through what? Through the veins or the vessels. The vessels transport blood throughout the body. The blood vessels transport blood throughout the body. The nerves as well transport certain important nutrition in your body. But when you are stressed, prolonged stress, you because of becoming tense. We are tense individual. Once you become tense, your body becomes tense. Stress narrows down your blood vessels. It makes them to be much thinner because they are not free. You are always tense. Once your blood vessels, your nerves have become thinner, it is difficult for, for enough flow of oxygen as well as blood. Blood needs to flow smoothly for your heart to pump. Your heart pump, for your heart to pump, you need blood circulation. Imagine your blood vessel that transport blood to your heart, oxygen, important nutrition, becomes narrow. That's why you experience a blood clot, a blood clot, meaning your blood, instead of being a liquid that can flow, it becomes thicker like fat, it becomes fatty, fatty like substance. Once it becomes fatty like substance, it's difficult for blood flow to move. It's difficult for uh, oxygen to move. That's why people are, are experiencing what you call high blood pressure, high blood pressure, because there's no enough flow of blood and oxygen throughout your blood. Instantly, if it's not treated again, people experience cardiovascular disease and experience Instant heart attack. If not heart attack, they'll experience. Mm, I, I keep on forgetting this week. Stroke. They experience stroke. So that's what happens when, when you are too stressed for a long period of time. Your blood vessels become narrow. Your, your nerve become narrow. Once they become narrow, there's no enough circulation of blood, no enough circulation of oxygen or the important nutrition. By the important nutrition, the things that you eat. Doctors normally tell you eat an apple a day. An apple a day won't go to a doctor. Eat fruits, eat certain meals. Those are important nutrition that are circulated to the to the appropriate parts in your body. So chronic stress leads to somatic disease.
They are given an example here. Yeah? They are saying, for example, a man who has hereditary heart condition, a man who has hereditary heart condition is likely to develop cardiovascular disease if he experiences chronic stress. Some diseases are hereditary through genes. You'll find that your grandfather, your mother, they have high blood pressure. And you yourself, you're more likely to have high blood pressure because it's genetically, it's hereditary. However, this, they say here, that won't be your, your cause of death. However, if you're too stressed, that's when high blood may reveal itself. That's when perhaps cardiovascular disease is something that is hereditary can reveal itself because you're too stressed. Some diseases are due to stress. You might not experience what your father experienced or your grandfather due to genet genetically. However, the more you experience stress, chronic stress, that's why you attract the hidden disease. That's what they're saying. You have inherited cardiovascular heart blood pressure. It's a family illness. However, there will be those who are, don't experience it at all because they are not attracting it. What attracts it is too much stress. It will evoke the disease. For example, a man who has a hereditary heart condition is likely to develop cardiovascular disease, which is a heart disease, if he or she experiences chronic stress. People define the kinds of condition they develop. For example, some people may respond to stress with digestive difficulties and others with rush. rush. Now we are, we are here. Response specificity. What is response specificity? They say, for example, some people may respond to stress with digestive difficulties, others with skin rash. This is because people tend to respond to stressors in a certain way, with certain physiological reaction patterns. That is, they tend to have specific response pattern in reaction to stress. Each and every individual, they have a specific response pattern to stress, response pattern in reaction to stress. The example that they're giving us, so when some people are stressed, they experience digestion difficulty. Some they develop rash in their skin. Some they experience numbness at the back of their shoulder. So we have different stress response specificity. You also have your 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 unique stress response specificity will differ. Some they feel like urinating, some they feel like going to the toilet. That is response specificity. We have, we have different stress response specificity. Before I continue to see if you understand what is stress response specificity, let's check what are stress response specificity to see if you understand. Anyone? What are stress? Response specificity. Okay, thanks, Mona. As you can see, the stress is a feeling, anxiety, agitation. What test book were we reading out? Because it said you don't have a precept book for this module. See, is the, is this the test book you are reading from? Yes. This is the test book I'm reading from. Student A to Z. Valera, please check. Your tutorial letter, tutorial letter 101 and a piece right book. You, you open your tutorial letter 101 and you check the at end of the session piece right book. However, this is it's green. No, Varela says, according to, to her knowledge, there's no piece right book for the module. So I'm trying to direct her. You can go to tutorial letter 101, check under the section in the, in the index piece right book, then you'll see. Okay, guys, what's your response? Stress specificity. When you are stressed, which part of your body reacts to stress? How do you know that you are stressed? Would mean when I'm stressed, I experience a need to go to a toilet ever since I was a baby. Okay, another person, I can. Yes. Your name? Yes. 
from my side, when I'm stressed, is my shoulders. I feel oh, so heavy in my shoulders. Yeah, on my shoulders. Both your shoulders. I that I, yes, on my, on my shoulders. Okay, thanks okay. for that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, most people they experience their strength response specificity on their shoulders. Even the doctors they tell you shoulders they are the most important indicators. Thanks for that. Your name is? I can't see you here. Uh, my name is Manau. Oh, Manau. Okay, thanks very much. Next person. Okay. Matabali siho jabuli ile velarini mabunda enlela your stress response specificity. There's this one that we know as, as well, particularly when you write exam. When you when you write exam in, in your high school days, there's an vigilator, they will count, they say 30 minutes remaining. Enlela, I see your hand. I'm stressed, it affects like my Stomach and stomach. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Yes, stomach is also a, a, a well-known indicator. I was explaining. Thanks, Lela. I was I was explaining uh, normally in high school, even in university, those who have, have got an opportunity to write exams venue-based, not online. There's an invigilator. They normally count 30 minutes remaining, 15 minutes remaining, 10 minutes remaining. There's that feeling, that nice feeling you normally experience as time is ticking. You feel like folding your legs, opening them. That anxiousness, that anxiety. So we normally experience when there are deadlines, particularly when they're sitting next them, you feel like going to the toilet. Is common to most of the students. That is a stress response specificity to those who have experienced it. We received notification that there's no longer a test book for this semester. It is now only a recommended book. Okay. So you have received information. Okay, thanks, Chabulile. We received the notification. It's, it's a recommended book or it's recommended, meaning your study guide has enough information. So when they say it's recommended, I mean, you, you, you can consult it for additional information. However, when I teach you, I use the same PISA book to give you a broad information. So use them both. Use a study guide as well as the PISA book in order for you to master the content. So thanks very much, Chabdine. Or thanks for bringing that up, Vilarin. Okay, let's continue, guys. Yes, we explain how the stress causes the physical... Uh, physical harm to our body. We explain psychosomatic diseases. We explain response specificity. Response specificity, they like it in the, in the exam. Now and again, we'll get a question like that. The tendency to, to have a specific res, response specific, a specific pattern in reaction to stressors. The processes of stress. We are now done with the effects of stress. I think the process of stress, the process of stress, like I've said, the process, the steps on how we can trace stress, how do we experience stress, that's a process. The process of stress is divided into two. It's divided into two. We have, we have, we have hand sailing under case theory, as well as the contextual modern of stress. Let's start with this one. Hans Stanley, theory, theorist for general adaptation syndrome. Theories for general adaptation syndrome, which stands for, for guess. Guess suggests that there is a pattern in a way in which people react to stressors regarding the nature of their stressors. There is a pattern in the way in which people react to stressors regardless of the nature of stress. So regardless of the nature of stress, whether exam stress, relationship stress, family stress, workplace stress, there is a pattern in which people react to stress. What is that pattern according to guess? The, I'm, reading, I'm, I'm now reading from the book, they say, the general adaptation syndrome, 
The stress process was first described by Hensi, whose model of stress process is known as general adaptation syndrome, often abbreviated as GAS. The model is important because it suggests that there is a pattern in a way people react to stressors, regardless of the nature of stressors. Therefore, although some stressors may cause more stress than others, the process of stress remains the same. What is the process of stress? These are the three processes of stress, three phases. Three phase processes, alarming, mobilization phase, resistance phase, and exhaustion phase. One, alarming phase. What is alarming phase? They say, at first, we become aware of the presence of stressor. The first reaction is to be alarmed. We experience shock. Our ability to cope with stressor drops below our normal level of coping. First, we need to encounter stress to be able to identify this is a stressor. I always make an example of, an, of a snake with my students. I say to them, imagine you are seeing a snake. Depends on how experienced are you with snakes. There are people who are familiar with snakes. There are people who are not familiar at all. There are people who can differentiate between the snake that can bite you and the snake that's not uh, that's not poisonous, meaning their alarming and mobilization phase would differ. They say we become aware of the presence of stress. We see the snake. The first reaction to to be alarmed. We experience shock, and our ability to cope with stress drops below the level of our coping. You see snakes, they know this is danger. They, they say our low level of coping drops. However. The body counts the effect of being alarmed by releasing hormones that help us to mobilize against the stress. As soon as you see the danger, then you look at it, you try to interpret in your mind. They say our body releases hormones that help us to mobilize against the stress. As a result, our ability to cope increases to levels that exceed our normal level of coping. You see the snake? You become shocked instantly. You think, should I run away or stand? Should I kick the snake or talk to it? Depends. That's that what they mean. They say the certain hormonal release to mobilize against the, the, the stress. As a result, our ability to cope increase. When they say our ability to cope to, to increase, we are trying to make sense of the situation, whether to run or to stand. This thing happens seconds. It happens within seconds. Let, let's remove the snake example out. Examinations. We are about to write exam, the exams. The level of coping is alarm. Alarm is created by the timetable. They send you a timetable, they say you are writing on the fourth thing. And the 21st. And the 21st. That is an alarming phase. It's a realization that here is the challenge. How can I cope with it? I can cope with it through studying harder, attending tutorial sessions, conducting relevant textbooks, perhaps speaking to the lecturer. However, if the stress persists, however, if the stress persists, you can't able to handle it. Suddenly, you move to resistant phase. Resistant phase. During this phase, you try to deal with, with, with the stressor, and the coping level remains higher than normal. In this phase, we try to deal with the stressor, and our coping level becomes higher than normal. If the stressor is dealt with, with successfully, it disappears. But if you fail to, to cope, you ultimately reach the point of exhaustion. This is a determining stage. Whether you manage, whether you manage to deal with stress or not. If you manage, that is fine. If you not, then move to exhaustion phase. In terms of the snake, the resistant phase will be. It's difficult to come up to the solution. Chances are, we decide let me run away because you can't cope. Running away, yes, may lead to danger. The snake will attack. Or you might be safe, depending on the distance. That is resistant. 
Or, if you can't manage the situation, perhaps you will sweat. How can it lead to death? If the snakes bite you in that instant, you are anxious, you are too stressed, blood flow will much quicker because you are panicking and the poison will move quicker straight to your heart. Let's do an example, a, 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 a examination timetable. You fail. You have to conduct a, a, a tutor, a lecturer, you fail to manage your studies. Then comes the exam, you are writing tomorrow. Then you decide, no, let me conduct a doctor. And get it, eh? Doctor's notes. Some student does that. What can I do not to write the, an exam? Some, they drive so that they drive slowly or attend the exam slowly so that they can chase them away. They have, they have a valid reason that I couldn't write because I was not allowed in. Some students open an exam and close it. Online exam, some they are, they students have tendencies when you write online, multiple choice question. You open the questions and you realize, no, 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 this is what I've not started. You close the system. As soon as you close the system, instantly it submits. It won't say you submitted twice and you deleted the answer, then you, it will say submit. So that's the resistant phase. If you fail, you're failing to manage, it takes you straight to exhaustion phase, the intense phase. During this stage, in the stress process, our ability to cope declines sharply, quickly drops below the level of coping. If the situation, situation continues, we finally reach the point where the negative consequences of stress begin to show. We may become physically ill, finding it difficult to concentrate, suffer a heightened degree of irritation, some even collapse. You sing in a lion, instead of running, you collapse. It's the meat. That's exhaustion phase. If the information is overwhelming, you won't try to exam, you are hospitalized, perhaps depression. So it depends. So this is the first phase. I said process of stress is divided into two. Process number one, this is process number one. Ainsley, theory of guess, suggests that there's a pattern in the way in which people react to stress. Patterns in the way in which people react to stress, regardless of the nature of stress. Through these three phase process, that's alarming. Alarming is the first contact of stress. Where you encounter the stress. Whether it's snake abuse, you realize that you are sick, resistance to it, you are resistant, you are trying to manage stress. We're coming up with strategic ways on how to manage stress. As a station phase is when you fail, then your body reacts to stress. Either through illness, depression, low level of coping mechanism. This is the first one. Then the second one is the contextual model of stress. Another, the other is falls under the process of stress. The contextual model of stress. It has four assumptions of stress. Four assumptions as well as the five phases. Five phases of Jordan. Let's start with the four assumptions of stress. I'm reading from the study material now. They say the guess model describes the process of stress as a as a general term in general terms only. It does not include final details. For example, it does not take into account the fact that events as and circumstances are not equally stressful to all people. They are saying, yes, the guest theory is fine, it makes sense. However, it does not consider the fact that circumstances are not equally stressful to all of us. Like I said, when you see a snake, imagine a biologist or zoologist, when they see a snake, they react different than a, just a, a normal person, me and you as psychologists, they react differently. Because we, are, we have not studied anything about snakes. You don't have any knowledge about snakes, meaning to us it will be more intense. But to a zoologist, biologist, people, events, what dealing with animals, it much it will be easier to manage it. Meaning 
our stress level will differ. Someone finds, they say someone may find punch jumping as a pleasurable challenge. Someone may find punch jumping as a pleasurable experience, a challenge, while others may be horrified at the idea of punch jumping. It also depends on the context or not appraisal of the situation. Jordan formulated a more comprehensive model that takes the context into account. That is, Jordan take the situation into account. The maintenance of this model is that people perceive events in, in context, that their reaction to them okay in a particular context. Therefore, as an event needs to be contextualized, people can can be seen as a stressor and the reaction to an event needs to be considered in the context, contextual model. They say for us to understand stress, for us to manage stress, people need to understand stress in its context. Context that is our level of coping differs. Our level of coping with stress differs from context to context. What might stress you might not stress me. What might affect other people may not affect may not affect other people due to the context. You make an example. Some may find punch jumping as a pleasurable experience, some not. Some may find a crowd too overwhelming. Some people like spending time in the crowd. Some might find driving at a high speed pleasurable. Some slow speed. Some airplane. Some people will avoid airplane as much as possible because of the in their mind conceptual stress. That is context. Then they give us example. What do they mean by context? Context to context. They start by no universal meaning. They say stress has no universal meaning. All right, our understanding of stress cannot be the same. Or our feeling of stress cannot be the same. They say stress has no universal meaning. An event does not have a universal meaning independently of the situation of which it occurs. In other words, an event gains its meaning when it's perceived by someone in a particular situation. This means that one person may perceive an event as a stressor, while another person may not perceive the event as a stressor. It also means that people may experience an event as stressful on one occasion, but not on the other occasion. That stress has no universal meaning. You might find that standing in front of the crowd and do a presentation does not stress you, but it does stress the other person. They say community, share beliefs and meanings. What do they mean? This means that communities may share interpretation of the stressful, of the stressfulness of certain events. The individual members of the community are likely to see an event as stressful if it is viewed as a stressor by the community as a whole. Community share beliefs and meaning. Com communities differ. There are, communi there are communities, they will tell you, our challenge in our community is drug addicts. Selling off drugs. That is our stress. And in other communities, they say no low shading. Some communities, no, we don't experience low shading at all compared to in other, other, other townships. Meaning low shade, low shading is a stress in that particular crime. From situation to situation, some community will tell that there's too much crime in our location compared to others. So com from community to community, communities, they share different beliefs and meaning regarding crime. Positive and negative stressors. Then we have positive and negative stressors. Stress is divided into two. There's positive stress and negative stress. When an event is perceived as a, as a stressor, a, the person or the community assign a positive or negative value to it, depending on the situation in which it occurs. Then what is the positive stress? Positive stress is associated with life enriching, life enrich, enriching events. The outcomes of these events are beneficial to an individual and the community given the current circumstance. Uh, they say positive stress is associated with something that motivates you life enriching event. For instance, you came to UNISA to study because you would like to change your life. You like to obtain the qualification. You want to obtain a qualification. You pursue your career. Either you value money 
or you value success. No, 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 not success. Either you value money or you value helping other people. However, doing psychology, studying psychology or studying social work, your, your end goal is to pursue your, is to achieve your goal. That is a positive stress. You wake up in the morning and study. You consult your fellow mates. You attend to these classes. It's a positive stress because it's something that makes you feel good. You are budgeting to buy your ideal car. You are budgeting to buy your, your ideal house. That's a positive stress, something that motivates you. It's life enriching. The negative stress is associated with life threatening events. Negative stress is a life threatening event. The outcomes of these events are harmful or detrimental to people. Life threatening. The outcomes of these events are harmful and detrimental to a situation in which people in the community find, find themselves. So negative mostly things that it, it's difficult to control. Like cancer then floods. Something that's beyond your control. So every time when it rains, we find that there are people that are traumatized by the rain now. Every time when it rains, they think of floods. Due to COVID, there were retrenchments now and again. Some companies will lose. The stress that is beyond the level, then it's a negative stress because it's something that's beyond your control. It's either get a new job or you don't get a job, you don't get paid. That's a negative stress. It's beyond your control. It's time the stresses that are imposed by other people in your life. It's difficult to control and they're negative. Positive is something you can control. I can choose tomorrow. No, I don't want to study to avoid this positive stress. Whereas negative is difficult to control. Four, well, perception. Event gain meaning through perception. Events gain meaning through perception. Therefore, the process of perception is a key factor in the, con in the conceptualization of an event. We have to indicate how an event is perceived and appraised if you wish to describe the process of stress. Our interpretation of stress differ. Event gain meaning through in percep uh, interpretation, perception. Therefore, the process of perception is a key determinant. We have to engage how event is perceived and appraised if you wish to describe the process of stress. You see? Our perception. I say our interpretation of stress differs. Differs due to our perception. Then moving along, how do we explain this in this model? In these five phases, five phases by Jordan. The five phases by Jordan while encountering potential stressors. So don't confuse these five phases by Jordan to these phases this alarming phase, a resistant phase, and exhaustion phase. Five phases by Jordan. One, encountering potential stressors. They say one, in, in order to Interpret stress. They say encountering potential stressors. The, the world we live in consists of various events, which are potential stressors when they are first encountered. They have potential to be stressors, but they cannot be seen as stressors because they have not been interpreted as such. That is encountering stressors. There are three categories of potential stressors under encountering stress. So encountering stress, it says itself, encountering stress. Same applies to alarming and mobilization, is the first contact of stress. Same applies to encountering stress, is the phase when you encounter stress. Let me repeat and say, the world we live in consists of various events which are potential stressors when they are first encountered. They are potential stressors when they are first encountered. They have potential to be stressors, but they cannot be seen as a stressor because they have not been interpreted as such. What do they mean that they're not interpreted as such? Again, what stresses you might not stress me. 
Encourage might stress you, but might not stress me. Yes, they say encountering the potential stressor, meaning you have not encountered the stress during a crowd. You cannot, you, you have in, uh, encountered the stress related to crime. You have never been dropped. So your reaction to crime might differ from a person who's been dropped now and again. That's a difference. They say you have, first you have to encounter a potential stress for each for you to call it a stressor. If you not not encountered it, you cannot call it a stressor. They break it down into three. They say universal events. Universal events are the, are the, if are events that affect the majority of people and are encountering potential stress. A stress is that affect the majority of people. Crime affect majority of people. So it's something that you are aware of. It's a stressor to almost all of us, track crime. You enter when you buy a car, you make sure that you put cracker, you put insurance, when you drive, you drive, you drive, you become alert because it's a universal stress. Majority COVID is a universal stress. You enter to try to wear masks, to try to protect ourselves. It's a universal because we've encountered it, you have seen it, we heard about it, you have seen it on TV. Then there is a personal event, personal stress. A personal stress, something that you experience as an individual, but other individuals have not experienced. Then a micro, micro, micro stress is related to natural disasters. Natural disaster, like I've said, floods is a natural disaster. So it's not just a, it's not just universal. But it's beyond. So micro sets are micro are everyday encounters in our daily lives. So for us to interpret it as a stress, you need to experience it first, you need to see it first. Then you can conclude and say, this is stressing me. Then we have performing a primary appraisal. Performing a primary appraisal, when an event is encountered, we immediately experience it as a positive, negative, neutral, or ambiguous. This is the result of a primary appraisal of the event. The feeling we experience is the result of psychobiology. Primary, performing a primary appraisal, this one, when an event is encountered here, when an event is encountered here, something is a stressor for the first time, we experience it as a positive, negative, or ambiguous. This is the result of primary appraisal of the event. The feeling we experience is that of, of, of psychobiology, for example, whether the feeling is tense, psychosocial situation in which we find ourselves. For example, I may be praised for my courage to sit for a challenging exam. The way in which I perceive the praise depends on the psychosocial circumstance of the praise event. If the, the praise is offered by someone who I know really understands the challenge of I may perceive the, the praise as positive, but if the, it comes from someone who does not have the friendless idea of complexity of the exam, I may not take it seriously. This is an example here. They say when you encounter stress, you need to determine whether it's a positive stress, negative stress. It's a natural stress or ambiguous. Depends on your experience. They give then they give you an, you an example. If right now I'll give you an assessment, or let's assume you complete your assignment, the lecturer sends you a feedback and say to you, well done, you have, you have shown that you have started, you have proven your competence. Then your fellow, your fellow study party says to you, well done, you have shown that you have, you have started and show your competence between the lecturer and the student which statement do you value the most that's a question between and a feedback from a, from the student a fellow student and a feedback from the lecturer which feedback could you value the most the feedback that you value the most mostly is from the lecturer why because he or she marks you he or she has a a, a better knowledge of the content of the book. So if the, the lecturer praise you, you take it more to the heart compared to 
a praise from a friend. That's why they say it's performing primary praise and you interpret. You interpret praise. That's performing the appraisal. You determine whether the, the situation is positive. If this is positive, that's a positive stress. You move along. You do it. If it's negative stress, you can determine how stressful, how intense the negative feeling, how intense is the event. Then you deal with it or you run away. It depends. That's primary appraisal. Once you have determined whether it's a positive stress or negative stress, number two, then that this is when this is where you experience stress. If you have seen it as a negative stress, you have, here you experience it direct. They say the feeling of stress is associated with tightening, psychophysiological arousal. We feel physically and emotionally tense. This is generally a feeling of pressure. If the events acquire negative feeling in the primary appraisal phase, we associate the event as harm and threat. If you see it, the situation here is negative, meaning you experience harm and threats. But if you see it as positive, you experience challenge and motivation. So how you experience the stress? Here you see it for the you see it for the first time. You perform, you determine whether it's negative stress, positive stress. Now that you inter interpret it, whether it's positive or negative stress, here you experience it. If you have seen the stress as positive, obvious, it will challenge you when you be motivated. If you see the stress as threatening, obvious, it will, it, you feel harm and a negative vibe. Or oh, performing a secondary appraisal. A secondary appraisal in this instance is, in this phase, an event has been identified as a stressor and the individual community as a whole has to consider his or her ability of coping with a stressful demand. Now you apply your coping mechanism. I've, I'm experiencing it as a stress. Now you apply your coping. No, before you apply coping mechanism, you determine, they say, you consider the ability to cope with the demands. You consider the ability to cope with the demands. The outcome of the foregone that appears that depends on the two factors, namely whether you've seen the stress as positive or negative, which appropriate mechanism can I use? Once you ratified, we have identified the coping mechanism. Here you apply the coping mechanism. You apply them in your life. You make things practical. Yeah. Practical example will be encountering stress, you receive your timetable. Once you receive your timetable, how does it sit with you? The fact that they said you are writing online instead of venue pace or venue pace instead of online, how does it sit with you? Then you interpret, no, I, I would love to write online. I would love to write a venue pace. That's your interpretation, whether it's negative or positive. Now you're experiencing stress. If you choose to you know, write online, now, then you consider data, you consider that I need to have a laptop, I need to have a, a safe place where I can study, a conducive environment where I won't be disturbed. We're experiencing stress here because of chosen, chosen an online exam. Performing secondary appraisal. Performing secondary appraisal, now that you have considered the uh, uh, online again exam, Copy mechanism, you to realize that no, 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 I don't have a suitable place to complete my exam. I don't have enough data. But how can I get data? UNISA offers us data. I can budget to get data. Then you apply your coping mechanism to doing it. Then. So it's a process, the pattern, how to manage stress. Then the last one we have the psychophysiological stress. The psychophysiological stress, the relationship between the mind and the body. They say you experience physical tension, emotional tension, as well as psychophysiological arousal. So the psychophysiological arousal, you experience physical tension, emotional tension, and it's psycho, it's just a summary. What is physical tension? It's physical tension we explained it now and again. Health related. 
How does stress affect your body? How does stress affect you emotionally? The relationship between the two, the mind and the body. That's it. So for you to master, for you to master psychological stress, you need to be able to know these aspects. Firstly, no, these are the effect of stress, the process of stress, as well as the psychophysiological of stress. Let's just recap. We says stress is the feeling we experience when things are getting too much. In other words, stress is an emotional response to circumstances, events that threatens us or challenge our coping mechanism. So threatening us is negative stress. Challenging our coping mechanism is a positive stress. It is a physiological response to physical and psychological demands called stressors. So anything that stresses you is a stressor. Anything that affects your coping mechanism or challenge your coping mechanism is a stressor. Then we look at the effects. We said the effects, effects has to do with the causes. The process is the patterns, the patterns of stress. How do you experience stress in, in, a, in a step format? The psychophysiological stress, the relationship between the mind and the body, the relationship between stress and performance. How does stress affect one's performance? How does stress affect one's performance? Then it took us to Jenkins and Donson's law. We said Jenkins and Donson's law says the higher the arousal, the higher the performance. The lower the arousal, the lower the performance. They say at moderate level, that's where stress is normal. It's a true stress, it does exist, it's acceptable because you can't live without stress. However, if stress beyond stress goes beyond the moderate level, meaning that's an abnormal stress, is a type of a stress that can affect you physically. The stress of a stress that can be once it's prolonged, you become ill. Because go it went beyond the normal level of coping. At high level of arousal, you fail to manage your stress here, the level of stress starts to drop. You fail to manage it here, the level of stress starts to, start to drop, meaning performance drops. Your level of coping with the exam drops, your level of work drops. Family setting, you are unable to cope with the family demands. What, what, what factors influence these levels? Complexity, not very simple. We say individuals are not, I get easily bored by doing simple tasks. Simple tasks, chances are you won't finish them. It becomes stressful of doing one thing over and over again. You end up find people working in certain organization, getting a pleasurable money, good salaries, however, because the job is boring, you find a person changing your career because she or she does not find the challenge. It causes stress, even though you get money, it causes stress that now and again, I need to do one thing over and over again. Then there's novelty. Novelty is doing something new, something new, something original, something unusual, something unusual. It increases your level of coping, your concentration, because I'm, we are more looking forward to do it because it's something new, it's exciting. But complexity and novelty, they are almost the same. Something that is difficult, it challenges you to finish it compared to this one. So the time to say the tasks that are novelty and complexity encourages positive stress, whereas simple tasks encourages negative stress. Going on, we mentioned that the relationship between stress and health. There is a relationship between stress and health. They start by saying, Stress is, it is not a direct cause of death, but it certainly acts as a catalyst. Stress that is, is, is not a direct cause of death, but acts as a catalyst. If you have conditions, chronic conditions like heart blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, or any other illness, at the same time, you're experiencing a prolonged stress due to your circumstances. Perhaps you are stressed by the same illness, perhaps you are stressed because you are unemployed, the disease or illness becomes worse. 
chronic and repeated stress causes the, the disease to become worse. Yet we should avoid being stressed. Then there's the response specificity. The response specificity, they say, we react to stress differently. We react to stress differently. There's a pattern in which we react to stress differently. Then you mentioned a student that some they, they mentioned that they experience stress in their shoulder when they are stressed. Then they experience pain in their shoulders. Some they say digestive, digestive system changes. Some they mention um, they want headache. Some they experience headache as a response specificity to stress. We mentioned Hannes' theory of it gas. They say gas suggests that there is a pattern in which there's a pattern in the way people react to stressors, regardless of the nature of stressors. There's a pattern in the way people respond to stressors, regardless of the nature of stressors. How does that happen in this phase? So there are two phases. There's three phase process as well as alarming phase. They are the same, however, the stage three phase uses three is uses three phase. Jordan uses five five phases. Alarming phase is read by you encounter stress. We made different examples. Encountering stress, alarming phase number one, you sing a lion. You sing a lion or you you see someone erupt. That is alarming phase. You first you, you are you are identified the stressor. Once you identify the stressor, the resi resistant phase, how are you planning to manage the stressor? Then if you fail to manage the, the, the stressor in this resistant phase, it moves to exhaustion phase. Exhaustion phase, where you couldn't manage the stressor. If you, could, you can't manage the stressor, automatically the performance drops. You become more stressed, performance drops. There's the contextual model of stress. Contextual model of stress, this is determined by these four assumptions. They say they agree with guess that there's a pattern in a way people react to stress. However, they say it differs from situation to situation, from context to context. Yes, they might, they can, there could be a pattern, but it differs based on this assumption, they say no universal meaning. Stress has no universal meaning. What stresses you might not stresses me. You don't have the same meaning towards stress. If you find walking at night stressful, someone may find it not stressful. They mention bungee jumping. Some may love bungee jumping. Some may not, don't love bungee jumping. Two, community shared beliefs and meaning. Community share leaves a meaning. Let's assume that you buy a house in a certain location. Normally, you like to know things like how is crime there? Are there malls? Are there any petrol stations? Is there any schooling? Meaning you try to avoid anything that might stresses you. Maybe you've been far away from the mall, it stresses you. Not having schools around, it will, it will affect you because your, skills, your kids need to attend schooling. Having People who, who didn't interact in your community might not sit with you well, meaning community share beliefs and meaning. What stress is that your community may not stress your community? Something that you share with your community that stresses you as individuals. Then there's positive stress and negative stress. Positive is a stress that motivates you, something that challenges you. Like I said, going to school, attending these classes, it's a positive enrichment because you like to better yourself. That is positive stress. Whereas negative stress is a stress that threatens you, mostly a type of stress that are beyond your control, losing your job. Wanting to study, however, you don't have financial assistance. That is the negative stress, it's beyond your control. Then perception, our perception to stress differs. The way we see stress that differs due to our experiences, it's based on our experiences. You see a snake, however, due to the fact that you have seen how they manage snake here, you are experienced with snakes, your perception might differ from a person who is afraid of, snake, of snakes. In your case, you know that when you see a snake, don't face it. 
Don't move slowly. Don't try to aggress it. Don't try to beat it first. If it bites you, how to manage? That is based on perception, based on experience. Then five phases of Jordan. Alarming phase, you encounter stress. First time you encounter stress. Two, how do you interpret that form of a stress? Do you see it as negative or positive? Now that you've interpreted it as negative or positive, then it will hit you physically. If it's something, if you have interpreted it as positive, it will erase a positive feeling within you. you encourage a positive feeling. If it's negative, it will threaten you, harm you. Performing secondary appraisal. Secondary appraisal, here we have primary appraisal, will determine whether it's negative or positive. Performing secondary, this is, this is interpretation as well as coping mechanism. How can I manage this situation? How can I manage this situation? Then I find solutions, then you apply those coping mechanisms. Done. And this is just a breakdown of what we mean by physical tension, by physical tension, how does stress affect you emotionally? Then the psychologically, in, in the textbook, they break it down to, they say, stress is the feeling we experience when things are getting too much. Okay, we wrote that one. They say, the, the experience of stress involves the combination of psychological and physiological factors. To understand this, the psychophysiological processes, we have to consider the physical tension, emotional tension, They say all living bodies maintain some degree of physical tension through the sympathetic and parasympathetic division. You see in the study material, physical tension, they say to you, we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic division of, of the autonomic nervous system responsible for physical tension in your body. They say sympathetic stimulation increases your body's degree of physical tension, whereas parasympathetic decreases it. You will see in the textbook there's parasympathetic and sympathetic. Where they, where they say sympathetic increase your body degree of physical tension, whereas parasympathetic see, see, lowers it down. Para, like paralyze. Para, paralyze. Parasympathetic lowers your body tension down, whereas sympathetic increases your body tension. Yes, you. We'll see. Then you have emotional tension, emotional tension, which is also related to physical tension because once you experience emotional tension instantly, it leads to physical harm in your body. Then psycho and physiological arousal, you study further it's a relationship between the body and mind in arousal. So this is the material I use, both the study guide and that recommended book. Have you seen the My Unisa app? Now that you're going to write exams, whether face to face or online, there's a My Unisa app. I think they've introduced this a month ago or two months ago. I suggest that you download that app. It's user friendly, particularly if you are if internet challenges you. Remember, now you go to Google, you log in your details. You place login at times it does not open, but with the app, I find it much easier. You can actually submit your assignments using the app. Because normally it's, it's connected to an internet much easier compared to going to the website. So download that app before that exam and check how you can use it for your benefits. It's more like using your Facebook, your Instagram, you, you log in, your details stay there, you just press the app it opens. You can see your results instantly. You can update anything that you want to update using the app instead of going to Google and putting your details. Just check it. Go to my UNISA website before you even log in. There's a link below on how to download an app. The one thing what is good about the app as well, let's assume that we are trying to submit your exam, but internet doesn't allow you, or the, the UNISA system doesn't allow you. 
with an app, like you know your Facebook, they can, they are, you are monitored, you know, Facebook, how many times do you log in? How many, uh, how long did you stay in the app? Same applies to Unisa app, the app are, are designed to, again, monitor your, your presence in an app. If you can't submit your exam and you say, no, but I did try to submit, the app didn't allow me, it kept on giving me this error, meaning it's easy for you to screenshot the error. And we see your details. There is time there. It's much. It's much easier to convince perhaps the lecturer, the examiner that I tried to submit. This was the time, but I couldn't do. To, it gave me this error in my app compared to logging in via Google Online. App is much easier because on top there, on top of the screen, there will be your name. Once you log in, there's your name. You submit the assignment. There's the name on top as an evidence that is you submitting. So please make sure that you download it before exam. Just play around with it. It's user-friendly, it will benefit you.